today There's no ordinary world Somehow I have to find And as I try to make my way To the ordinary world I will learn to survive I dodged death many a time, and that night in Abilene was no good. I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob, and collecting the bounty on John Wisp. Texas Rangers got heart. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they want you to believe. You're dead. It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres to the very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me. <laughs> Wait, I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Hardin was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. He was a bona fide folk hero by then, and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping uh, Bob was among them. God damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! They didn't ask why I was there. They knew as most of them were wanted as well. I figured Harden was here somewhere, but to get to him, I'd have to get past his gun hands. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Harden wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friends. Harden's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their cafe of my unwelcomed presence. was among them. I steeled myself for the fight ahead, for as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers.
Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. Good shot. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Suffice it to say, nobody there was happy to see me. In fact, I felt a certain hostility. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. I felt a bolt of adrenaline, or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. Ah! No, wait! He didn't hit me then! I'm sure of it! That man was faster than Grease Lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Thank you, darling. 
Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, did you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. Bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high they tickled the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony, and the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. And it crossed my mind that maybe this wasn't such a good idea. But now that the shooting had started, there was no backing down. rugged country, the winter home of the Cherokawas, and that's why they had retreated there. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did, but then again, I've got a lot of those. Not at that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hideout. A deep crevice that led to a deeper cave. Don't tell me you went in there. 
Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure, angry cussedness. See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide, and I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit. They had torches on the walls. Big was this cave? Big as hell, Ben. Chiricahua had hid out there during the Indian Wars. They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? <laughs> to be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones. so much about angels. A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Religiony is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. I haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? Oh, well, I pursued him into the Cave of Death. I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows, and I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. as his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul will have no rainbow if the eye have no tears. He said I was a great warrior, a coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverines. They couldn't stop me though, and Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk. Where I couldn't see any way out of this trap. But suddenly, one just appeared. Kinda like a miracle. I felt like I would be lost in that damn cave forever.
Finally, I found myself back outside, perched on the edge of a precipice, overlooking a thundering white water river. To get where I was going required several leaps of faith, but no way in hell I was turning back. I chased after him, determined to make him explain the meaning of all that mumbo jumbo. Mumbo jumbo is right. Are you making this all up as you go? A few details may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened to me. There were dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from on high. Dozens? Well, maybe not dozens, but there was a lot of... At least three or four. Well, more than that, little lady. Deep climb up creek ahead of me and scrambled up those rocks like a mountain goat. I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. And wouldn't you know it, that crafty son of a bitch led me right into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches surrounding me. A hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not going to drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of... appeared before me that I had not seen before. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. But it was like that some of bitch disappeared into thin air. Never did find him. And never did collect my goddamn bounty. Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem, uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of right? I did my best, sir. We all did. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. 
You see, the dogs got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. The story was Bob Dalton's girl was always riding him about how he had no ambition. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. We got us the bull they could get away. Half the town took up arms to defend their property. The brothers paid dearly for their stupidity. But everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, and now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. The Marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. We just gotta wait to suck the bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. <clears throat> We've got company! Heroic men like him, who did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Is that Silas Greaves? Son of a bitch! Jim Boo and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo. Show yourself, coward! Taken down with his thieving dogs. His name was Silas Greaves. And when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. Daltons blew up a safe, and were all set to hightail it out of there. I was late to the party, and Coffeeville was already up in arms. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. And finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends and coffee. They were coming at me from all directions. 
caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to Get lose them. No the problem was, they knew the town they better than I did. And to top it oh, off, we gotta I found of myself in the they middle of another are. shootout oh, entirely. Did the Daltons yeah. pull up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Daltons. And they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Daltons. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in coffee mill that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. It was Emmett, the youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Reeves. This is where it is. He was determined to protect his brothers. I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. But Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? But I have to admit, that boy had grit. <laughs>